Hi, this is Michael Daly. I'm the Regional EMS Medical Director for the Hudson Mohawk Region, or REMO, in New York State. And I'm going to spend some time talking about patella dislocations and reduction of patella dislocations. I'd like to thank Ariel Leroy and Aaron Morin, both of whom are, uh, were residents at the Albany Medical Center, uh, for their support in writing this presentation. I don't have any conflicts of interest. I'm a member of the State Emergency Medical and the State Trauma Advisory Committees. I'm a member of my local REMAC. I'm an employee of the Albany Medical College and I serve as an unpaid advisor to many different organizations. The key to any new procedure is first to do no harm. Uh, that should be the most simple tenant in medicine uh, to assure indeed that we are doing our best for our patients at all time. If at any point you come upon a patient who you don't really understand the physiology or you don't understand their presentation, call and talk to a physician if you have any questions because that way you'll make sure that you really do keep true to the tenant of first, do no harm. So what is a patella dislocation? Well, a patella, as you know, is the kneecap. And the kneecap exists within a tendon across the front of the knee. It's not actually a part of the integral joint of the knee, but instead rides on top of it. If you look at this slide, the patella itself sits in a groove on the top of the femur and can, in, with stressors, slide to the side laterally or towards the outside of the leg most of the time into what's called a patella dislocation. When it sits there, it gets stuck. And because it's stuck, it causes a significant amount of pain for the person suffering this injury. A patella dislocation almost always happens with lateral movement, although it has been reported medially, but not as often. Usually this is young people, and they're doing some type of athletic event. Usually it's involving a planting of the foot and turning. Only very rarely will a patella dislocation occur with a direct blow to the knee, moving the patella. In a motor vehicle crash or other significant traumatic mechanism, what will more frequently happen would be a rupture of the patella tendon or a fracture of the patella. The other possibility is a true knee dislocation. But what you need to differentiate will be a dislocation of the patella from a knee dislocation. So who does this happen to? Most frequently, it happens to young people. It almost, with great frequency, it happens in females more than males. The trauma associated is usually relatively minor or didn't even seem like trauma at all. Someone cutting and turning when they're running, playing lacrosse or soccer, or somebody planting a foot while they're playing basketball. These are very, very common ways that this can occur. There's an obvious lateral deformity right on top of the knee, and the patient is almost always in considerable pain. They can't weight bear. They can't extend their knee. And if they get treated, there's an almost immediate relief of pain. In some cases, there may be an associated fracture, and in one paper, it's reported as 25%. However, in the case series that we've watched, we have seen no associated fractures with a patella dislocation. All that said, why should we reduce a patella dislocation? EMS providers generally don't reduce dislocated joints. Well, in this case, it creates a significant need for pain medication. So in many cases, a patella dislocation really should be an ALS call if that patella is causing severe pain for the person who suffered the injury. In rural or understaffed agencies, we don't have many advanced life support providers with the ability to give controlled substances. And as a result, this can leave us with no ALS coverage for patients that have more profound life-threatening needs for paramedic or critical care technician care. If not reduced, 
We get significant ongoing pain throughout transport for this patient. And frankly, there are less complications with early reduction. One of the most common complications of a patella dislocation actually comes from extremely aggressive and good care. Somebody gets a lot of pain medicine. If they get a lot of pain medicine and then the patella is reduced, they then have pain medicine with no pain and they can actually stop breathing. So the best treatment for a patella dislocation very clearly is reduction rather than pain medicine. So why reduce a patella dislocation? First, it's good medicine. It is good medicine to do something that can just relieve pain and leave somebody feeling more comfortable. Is there any potential harm from attempting to reduce a patella? No. Also notably, if it's reduced, there's no pain or very little pain afterwards, which is good for our patients. There is no risk. If you attempt to reduce a patella that's broken or you attempt to reduce a patella where the tendon is ruptured, it won't work and it may cause the patient some discomfort, uh, but ultimately it's not going to cause any long-lasting uh, long problems for our patient. So because of all of these reasons, the collaborative protocols physicians approached the state with time for a new protocol. And we developed training for patella reductions. So let's talk about a case. There's a 21-year-old female. She has right knee pain and swelling after twisting, twisting while dancing. She says the knee gave out, and she now has 10 on 10 knee pain. It's severe. She can't bear weight. She can't extend her knee. She's been made more comfortable while she was stabilized, but she's still having severe pain over the end of her femur. Let's watch a video quickly. So here we have a normal patella. It looks totally normal. And here we have a dislocated patella moved over to the side. See it sitting lateral, normal, dislocated. And you see the leg is slightly bent. And what the doctor is going to do now is reduce that patella dislocation. First, he's going to straighten the leg. All right, so I'm going to straighten your leg out. And now he's going to move the patella back where it belongs. All done. And it's reduced. All done. Whoa, that was quick. You did it, Kay. You did it. Does it feel better? Wow. Yeah. Great job. High five. You did it. Great and job. you're practically famous now. <laughs> Mimics? Well, one is a knee dislocation, where the lower leg is no longer in the same plane as the thigh. This can happen from a direct blow to the knee. Um, it can also happen, particularly I think about this in a motor vehicle crash, um, where you end up with major ligamentous injuries where all of the major ligaments that stabilize the knee rupture. This can actually lead to major vascular complications as well because the bones will press back on the blood vessels going through the space in the back of the knee. Quadriceps tendon rupture, where the patella will be high riding. This is actually the patellar tendon that holds that patella in place. And the patella will be high riding or up on the leg rather than lateral. Uh, there'll be a big divot where the patella should be. And the other possibility will be a patella fracture. This can happen with direct blows to the patella. And there'll be a divot where the patella should be. There'll be no lateral mass, but also there'll be severe pain right over the middle of the knee. Knee dislocations, as shown here, are associated with major ligamentous disruptions. They do frequently reduce um, posterior dislocations where the tibia moves backwards. Think about neurovascular compromise because the popliteal injury artery will very frequently be damaged as well. This is a knee dislocation, a true knee dislocation. You can see it both in this view as well as the radiographic view that actually the tibia is posterior to the femur. The patella, as you can see on this x-ray, is actually still perfectly in place. 
treatment for this pre-hospitally would be simple stabilization. And you may very well find out that this is incredibly unstable and the tibia may slip right back in place where it belongs, and that's absolutely fine. Just as long as if you happen to find that, you report it appropriately upon arrival in the emergency department. There are not a lot of times in medicine where we get an opportunity to high five our patients after a procedure. That clearly was satisfying. The interesting twist on that patella dislocation was the patient was stabilized in a long frac pack leg splint with a SAM splint rolled up behind her knee. If the SAM splint had been inadvertently removed and her leg had straightened, that patient would have spontaneously reduced that patella. Let's look at a couple of cases that are not patella dislocations. First, let's look on the left side of the screen. On the left side of the screen, we have a void here where the patella should be. The patella is here riding high. That means that we either have a patella tendon or a quadriceps tendon rupture, or we have a patella fracture. One way or the other, we do not have a lateral mass here or lateral swelling indicating that the patella is lateral. We can see the patella is right up here above the knee and above the space where it should be. If we look to the right of your screen, you can see that the entire knee appears to be disrupted. I can't actually tell looking at that where which piece of the knee is supposed to be. That is a true knee dislocation. Here's another case. This is a 16 year old male who was doing squats in gym class. He was squatting with much more weight than he had ever done before. When he was doing this, he immediately dropped to the ground and dropped the weights because of pain in his left knee. He's unable to walk and he can't extend his lower leg. If you look, you can actually see that the patella is very high riding on this leg. And that actually the space where the patella would normally be here seems to be empty. In this case, this is actually a quadriceps tendon rupture and the patient was putting more stress on his leg than that quadricep tendon could handle. If you look compared to his other leg, here is a normal patella, here is a high riding patella. And comparing the two legs will very frequently give you an answer. Here's another case. We had a 21 year old male softball player. This has severe left knee pain and swelling. He was batting and he twisted on a flexed and planted left foot. He says his knee gave out and he had 10 on 10 knee pain. Can't bear any weight and he can't extend the knee. If you look, this patient has a laterally displaced kneecap or patella. The patella should be in the middle of the leg and it's not there. Treatment, reduce it. What you're going to do is put a little bit of force moving the patella medially and you're going to extend the leg at the knee, which means lift that foot and straighten the leg. After you do that, you're going to immobilize the patient and bring them to the hospital. Here's another video demonstrating the same thing. For this video, I'd actually like to thank Dr. Maney and also Five Quad Volunteer Ambulance from the SUNY Albany campus who assisted us with this reduction. As we've seen, most of the leg is intact, but the patella should be in the center. It's lateral and been displaced. We're going to extend at the knee, pull, pull the foot towards you, and I'm going to um, put steady pressure on the patella just to help ease it in, and everything's going to feel better. All right? Okay. Ready? Go. You're going to be good. And you're in. All done. Shit, that was fantastic. And it looks normal. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, certainly I apologize for the language, but clearly this was a spontaneous utterance by the patient. Um, again, while there were no fi high fives involved in this reduction, um, handshakes right after uh, procedure is also a clear indication that this went well.
Um, you can see that the squad that brought the patient in had had him appropriately splinted with longboard splints prior to uh, his care in the emergency department. But now we have a way to do this without needing to splint this patient in a position that remains painful. You can reduce patella dislocations. How do you document it? Well, you need to be really careful to make sure to indicate knee pain in your complaints. And if possible, you can write in suspected patella dislocation. For everybody using electronic PCRs, please make sure to use a procedure code of patella reduction if it's available. If not, you can do this as um, procedures for immobilization. We're working to add this to ePCR programs across the state, but currently that may not be a patella, a, excuse me, that may not be a procedure code that's available for you. Every single time you do a patella reduction, please go to your regional website and complete a brief, quest, brief questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to start by asking how much pain the patient was having and ultimately how much pain the patient had after the procedure. No one's ever really done a statewide procedure for patella reduction before. And across the collaborative, which is all of New York State, north of the city, we've got a potential to collect a lot of cases of these reductions. And this will give us an opportunity to learn how EMTs, advanced EMTs, critical care techs, and paramedics are doing with this new skill. We believe that this will be something that will be done well and will work well for our patients. If there's anything that we're missing, we, we want to make sure that we learn about it. Ultimately, we want to know how many times are we using this protocol and is the education that you've received adequate. Bottom line, reducing a patella dislocation or a kneecap dislocation is really good patient care. And all EMS providers can easily do this. Document it appropriately, assist us with the quality improvement project. And if there's any question of the diagnosis or appropriate treatment, call medical control and talk to a physician about making sure that you're doing the right thing for your patient. Remember, first do no harm. If anybody has any questions, please contact your local medical director, your regional medical director, or your regional offices for more information. Thank you very much.